So Toxicroak has zero usage competitively, and that's mostly because stat-wise it has basically just a little bit of attack and some mediocre speed. But it does have a pretty fun typing with poison fighting, along with a decent ability in dry skin, which gives Toxicroak an immunity to water while healing when hit or in the rain. We can bust out a sword stance to make its attack actually scary, and dual stab options with close combat along with gunk shot mess some fools up. Sucker Punch for priority works well to catch fast opponents off guard, along with Terra Dark to not only boost that, but become immune to opposing Psychic. Toxicroak could definitely use some love, so today we're going full frog. Look, here's the thing, are there way better options to use than Toxicroak? Absolutely, but sometimes you gotta pull the frog out and <laughs> see how it goes. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the High Dragon, not the guy I expected to see, but I have a spider and Ariados kind of has a great matchup here in terms of being able to, you know, potentially Mega Hornet. But I'm here to go for a sticky web, and that's going to be real nice if I can make my team just to have that little bit of a speed edge. It turns out turn one, they're actually going to go for the scale shot. It's going to be a physical high dragon, which is cool. And loaded dice is going to allow it to actually hit five times. But luckily, this Eriodos is max HP, and that just barely allows me to hang on. They would have broken through the focus sash, being able to hit multiple times. It does, in fact, give it that speed boost. However, I am at least able to get up that sticky web. And it doesn't look like they have great hazard control, so prioritizing getting up those webs is going to help me a whole lot here. So I have a couple different options, either I switch or I just kind of let the Eridos go down. But before I do that, I can at least get off a nice little sucker punch It does have minus one defense. So we're able to do, you know, at least a little bit of chip as they do finish me with the throat chop. So Eridos goes down. Bad news is the tripod dragon does have plus one speed, so it's going to be pretty quick. It's actually, it's gonna be faster than literally everything I have, so I have to decide who can at least take a hit, and I decide to bring in the kicking chicken. We got some feet that are ready for punching, and I know that I should at least be able to take an attack from this thing. So I decide to go for the U-turn in case they wanna switch, it covers for that, but also as they stay in and go for the scale shot, even with five hits, I should be able to just barely take it, and then I can just finish it off with the U-turn because it does have that defensive drops, and we got that super effective hit. So it does hit four times, kicking chicken is gonna hang on, and after that defensive drop, you're gonna be like, hey, I'm super fast now, and you're also super dead. Because so I go for that U-turn, it does take care of it. However, at least at this point, they're gonna now be able to see what I U-turn into and then decide a matchup. So, gotta be a little bit careful about what I wanna go into here, kinda looking at what they have left. I decide I should probably try to prioritize getting up some Stealth Rock. So, I go into the Sandy Shocks just because um, it's gonna bait in things like potentially the Red Ice, who I can set up the Toxic Rogue with which is what I'm kind of trying to do. So as they do end up switching into the old iceberg here, buddy is looking ready to sink the damn Titanic. I have a couple different options. So I decide to go for the stealth rock just because I know that I'm gonna be faster. Also, if they wanna over predict and think I'm gonna switch out and don't go for an ice beam, I do have the upper hand. Obviously this thing's gonna take nothing from a special attack, so I just get up my stealth rock. Turns out he's gonna do a little spin -a hit me with an ice beam, and that is gonna knock out the Sandy Shocks. However, that's kind of fine. I got my stealth rock up. And also, this feels like I have a pretty good opportunity to go into Toxicroak, mainly because with that sticky web set up on their side of the field, the Toxicroak is going to be quite fast, and I'm like, faster than everything. So I'm gonna bring in the, the Croak here, and we're gonna do some, some Croaky shenanigans. So I know that I can take at least one hit from whatever this thing wants to throw at me, and I can then go for the Swords Dance here, but it's actually gonna end up drawing a switch which is gonna allow me the Swords Dance for free as they actually bring in the Infernape. Probably thinking, I just go for a close combat, Ape could probably take one without a boost, but it does luckily get caught up in that sticky web and Buddy is just all tied up over there and slower. So the Stealth Rock also breaks any potential Focus Ashes, which is great. And now I get that free Swords Dance. With our attack doubled, now all of a sudden the frog is looking like the top damn frog on the beach here. And I am in a fantastic spot because of that sticky web support. So I know now that there is potential for them to have priority and things like a mock punch, but obviously not gonna do much. I can just outspeed, go for that close combat, and beat up the fighting monkey with our own little, little fighting frog style. So that takes care of the ape. Bad news about going for things like close combat, I do you know take some defensive drops, but that only really matters if they have like meaningful priority in the back. So now they decide to go into the Jolteon. A Swords Dance and a Life Orb allows me with this dual stat we have Close combat hits extremely hard. If you can connect on gunk shots, it's extremely hard. As they go into Jolteon after 
It's sticky web, unless this thing is choice scarf for whatever reason, I should be able to outspeed. Turns out I do, and I just go ahead and beat the devil out of him, like Bob Ross to his paintbrush out here. We're a damn artiste with the frog. So <laughs> that's gonna kill Jolteon straight up. Kind of worried about things like a Ghost Terra coming through, but just straight up just raw dogs it, and Jolteon has a bad time. So here's an interesting situation. Basque Legion is a mon that uh, does threaten me, of course, because I can't close combat it. But it actually doesn't really, because I it can't hit me with a water move. I just dry skin soak that shit up. And then also, it can't really hit me that well with a ghost move. So we're actually in kind of an inter interesting matchup here. I decide to go for the Sucker Punch. I, I do at least have the dark coverage here. And we know that they have to attack me, which is great. I can also just end up busting out the Terra Dark to just give me a little bit of extra stab there. With that stab boost, now with the Life Orb and the Swords Dance, nothing even wants to deal with a Sucker Punch. And we just uh, ensure that it's going to knock it down there with that uh, with that Terra. And it works really nicely to boost Sucker Punch, but also covers for, uh, you know, psychic attacks and really good synergy there. So that's just going to absolutely blast the hell out of the Basque Legion, and that's kind of the main threat out of the way there. So at this point, we've got ourselves in a spot where once you get a, once you click Sword Dance, a lot of the time, if especially you have the Sticky Web support to just be quick, uh, the Croak is an absolute threat that no one really prepares for or expects. So as they now go into the Sawsbuck, I'm just going to go ahead and close combat it. I mean, no reason to really click Gunk Shots here and risk a miss. They do actually end up busting out the Terra here. They're thinking, hey, I can at least go for a Terra Ground. Kind of make it so both of these thing's stabs are not going to be super effective anymore. Um, but luckily, because of the webs, we are quicker. And also, we are sharp as hell out here with that damn Sword Zant. So that just kills the Sawsbuck. And we got ourselves rolling downhill with the with the Toxic Croak. And uh, kind of the exact sweep you're looking for in a set like this. Uh, but that takes care of the buck, also gets rid of the Terra. They are now down uh, to one Mon left here. And we're just doing, we've only taken damage from our own Life Orb, which always feels good. So final Mon is going to be that Red Dice, which is exactly the guy we were looking to close combat in the first place. And nothing like cracking open a cold one with the boys. And uh, all I got to do is just connect on a close combat here. They do not have the Terra. That is going to be it, the end of the match there. And that could not have actually really gone better for our boy Croak here, which doesn't usually end up happening. Most of the time, Toxic Croak functions really well as a kind of mid to like late game sweeper. But in this situation, if you don't, if you're not prepared for the frog, you're going to have a bad time. And that is one way to body bag him with the, the frog. So that's going to do it for game number one. You already know we do have another match here for you because why the heck not? Listen, if you've stuck around at this point in the video and you're like, hey, I haven't even hit that like button yet, you should probably hit the like button. I don't know. It helps out the channel and stuff. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time my guy's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Palafin. Dolphin lead is generally what you can expect. A lot of the time they'll just kind of either switch out or flip turn on out of here and then be able to bring that boy in as a freaking superhero. And that's Eridos is just going to mind his own damn business. I'm just going to be like, I'm just going to do my spider stuff here. Just lay down some webs and make you slow. And Eridos is just here for a good time. So they do go for that flip turn. It is unfortunate because it breaks my focus ash on the Eridos. But as long as I can get up that sticky web, that's mostly fine. So they actually end up pivoting into the Annihilate. And this is an interesting fella whenever you're working with a sticky web team. Because obviously these things have Defiant. And now when it is able to switch in later you know, to the sticky web, it's actually going to get a free attack boost. And that's not... Super ideal, and them realizing that, they're actually going to go ahead and swap that thing out to be able to come back in later and just get an instant Defiant boost. So, they decided to bring in the Murkrow here. I decided with Eridos just to stay in and go for Toxic Spikes. I figured they don't have any Grounded Poison types that can soak that up, and also not great Hazard Control, so we're going to try to capitalize on that. But also, Murkrow is an interesting mon in terms of most of the time you know that it's going to be just kind of a prankster Tailwind kind of guy. And Tailwind is going to make things interesting because, I, you know, I have the Sticky Web up, but then they're going to be behind a Tailwind. I decided to actually just go ahead and bring in the Sandy Shocks as they actually Thunder Wave, which did not expect, but hey, it works out anyway. And you cannot, you know, paralyze me because I am a ground fella and also stuff. So they do go for the Tailwind, which is going to end up working out for things that don't touch the Sticky Web. But I can actually just fire off a nice little Thunderbolt. Surprisingly, this damn thing lives. That Eviolite is like a crack on this thing and it somehow is able to live that. Now realizing they probably switch, I can actually just go ahead and freely set up my Stealth Rock. Again, I'm going to capitalize on some hazards here if they're not going to end up doing anything about it. So, they actually now decide it's a good time to bring back in the Annihilate, but now we get to see uh, the shenanigans in action. So, we do at least get the Speed Drop that does, however, then proc the Defiant, 
which now gives it doubled attack. But it gets poisoned and this Annihilate just switched into a whole bunch of shit happening. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and set these here. I, I lay down some Stealth Rock, which is gonna be good um, for uh, potential later on. So Annihilate is in a spot where, you know, it's behind the Tailwind, but has minus one speed and it does have plus two attack. So it's gonna do a whole lot of damage regardless, but I'm actually faster because freaking Sandy Cheeks is quick as hell. I go for the Volt Switch, which does do some solid chip, and honestly, this thing is at least on a timer, you know, being poisoned. So I realized that uh, Roberto is not the kind of guy that's really doing too much for me here. So I can switch into Eridos mostly for free because I realized they're probably going to go for that bulk up, which is exactly what they do. They now have plus three attack, they got a defensive boost, and they still at least do have that Tailwind, but they're touched by the Sticky Web. So this thing, Annihilate finds itself in not a super great spot, but it's still definitely a bit scary. But one of the reasons why getting Eridos in here for free is nice is because I do threaten it with a Sucker Punch. Now, what's going through my mind is they've allocated a lot of resources in getting this, uh, this Annihilate in here. And I figure if it's a rest set, I'm going to have a horrible time versus it. So <laughs> I realized I could go for a Sucker Punch, but I think they might go for you know something like a Bulk Up again. It turns out they're actually just going to go ahead and bust out the Terra. They're going to go for that Terra Fighting, which... Which means they want to go ahead and resist that Sucker Punch, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They put the fist on the head. It turns out I do not go for the Sucker Punch just in case they wanted to bulk up again. I do realize that I have a lot of things in the back that are faster than this ape anyway. And I could just kind of wait for Toxic to do its thing and then pick it off with like a special attack. So they do go for that Rage Fist. And uh, Rage Fist with the freaking hat on his head is going to take care of the area dose. But at least this thing is, you know, around half and we're feeling... Like, this is mostly fine. The Tailwind does go away. It does at least still have uh, that attack boost, but, you know, it's, it's stuck in the freaking sticky webs. So, he's slow, and all I have to really do here is go back into freaking Sandy Cheeks here, and I realize that a Thunderbolt at least should pick this thing off at this range here. So, it does end up taking care of it. We are faster, and it did not get to rest today. If it was like a bulk up rest set, that could have been bad. However, we get rid of the Defiant Fella, and now the sticky webs are just going to be nothing but helpful. So... They do at least now get the revenge switch and do whatever they like, and in comes freaking Super Dolphin. And this thing's looking scary, and I guess a little less scary because it's caught up in the sticky web and poisoned. However, this thing does have priority in the form of Jet Punch, and I would not like to be Jet Punched today, as uh, this thing is a freaking zero to hero shenanigan. So I decide I actually have a pretty free opening to switch into Toxicroak here. That's just because Dry Skin is one of the ways that you can easily pivot this thing in. Uh, kind of for free. Toxicroak does struggle from being very frail and hard to switch into, at least hard switches. And so when I come in on things like a Jet Punch, my Dry Ass just goes ahead and soaks it up like some nice little lotion, and we're feeling moisturized and ready out here. So Toxicroak is in a position where now I'm pretty free to go for an SD. You know, I kind of need that setup with the Toxicroak here in most situations, and I also feel like there's not much in terms of coverage this thing can go for. So, I do go for that Sword Stance. To my surprise, they actually end up staying in here. Guy's looking confident over their hands on his hips. It turns out they do have the Acrobatics, which is, we're barely going to be able to hang on, but it's all you need. We do live it, which is amazing. And now, with that Sword Stance set up, the Croak is looking pretty solid here. Now, I decide to risk it and go for the Gunk Shot, which I probably should not have done, but I do connect on it at least, which is great, because that takes care of the Dolphin. I probably should have just gone for the Close Combat. I think I just maybe subconsciously was worried about taking defensive drops, but after the Life Orb Chip anyway, I, I'm not really planning on living any attacks regardless. So, they actually end up swapping into the Murkrow here, who just dies to the Stealth Rock, which is great. That's exactly why we want the Rocks up, and they probably just forget that that thing just couldn't couldn't switch in there. So Murkrow goes down and Toxic Rogue's like, send me your next warrior. I'm out here ready. I'm stanced the hell up out here. And as they now are able to bring in the Incineroar, things are a little bit of a problem here, but there's a lot of shit that's going to go down. So first of all, it's caught up in Sticky Web, of course. Kitty is slow. And then also it's poisoned. And then Intimidate is a little bit of a problem. Not necessarily a huge problem, just because of the fact uh, that it still puts me at, at plus one. So that feels pretty fine. And I'm like, I can actually just go for that super effective close combat. They actually do not end up swapping this thing out to save for an Intimidate later. Uh, however, at least I do have myself on a timer with the Life Orb. As I do get a nice little one hit KO with that plus one, it turns out it's actually Rocky Helmet. So he probably wanted me to touch the thing. And while I do take care of the Incineroar, that's a huge threat out of the way. I do actually let the Toxic Rogue you know, go down to that Rocky Helmet chip. Which is fine because we've put a meaningful hole in the squad at this point, and now we just gotta bring it back with the supporting cast here. So, on the empty battlefield, I decide to go into the Sandy Shocks. Feels like I just have like a decent matchup unless they go 
with the uh, freaking jet palafin, and they don't. So it turns out they go into the Hisuian Braviary, which is actually perfect, because now I can just freely go for a Thunderbolt, and as I do outspeed, it, it, this thing is not going to have a good time with that. Do you go ahead and roast the chicken for dinner, and or at least, I guess, zap it. We electrically fry the shit out of the chicken, and we're having some, some charged up chicken for dinner tonight. So that takes care of the Braviary, and at this point now, they can bring in the low kick. So... Final Mon being low kicks, this thing is obviously scary with first impression pretty much no matter what. But at full health, the Sandy Shocks should be able to take it. Unless it's going to bust out like a Terra Bug and a Choice Band and a whole bunch of shit. So um, I just go for that Thunderbolt here. It is going to first impression, not going to be Choice Banded, which is great. It is Life Orb, however. And at least a Thunderbolt is going to be able to finish it off. So that is going to do it for game number two. Toxicroak did find itself a way to both use its Dry Skin and get up another Swords Dance. And so we always call that a nice little time. So with that, I do actually have one more bonus match for you because we've been messing around with this team, just trying to see what I can get it to do. And it's, it's fun. So go ahead and buckle up for one more and we're going to see if we can get Toxicroak to, to shine once again. So this time they decide to lead off with a Mimikyu, which is, first of all, not usually the kind of guy I like to see as a lead. It's actually kind of scary because obviously with that disguise, it's able to guarantee it gets up a free swords dance and while we're usually the guys dancing with swords now we have to deal with opposing swords dancers so obviously lead Ariados, and i'm just gonna again lay down my sticky web this Ariados is real real good at that at least if he's good at anything it's clicking sticky web and then living stuff with the focus sash so the situation is i know that i can live one attack i go for a sucker punch here hoping they attack me so i can at least get down to their disguise or at least disguise being broken but it turns out they have different ideas and they actually go for another sword stance now at plus four, Mimikyu is real scary. At least I know that I mostly need to end this matchup with uh, this thing's disguise broken. As they do knock me down to my focus sash, that's exactly why we got the sash on the fella. And I do connect on a Mega Horn. I should have just continued to spam Sucker Punch to play it safer there, but thank God we do connect. And uh, it would have been great to have that swarm boosted to do some damage there. But at least we do break the disguise, and that's kind of the main goal. You know, versus especially a lead setup Mimikyu. Now, with this thing's disguise broken, I don't have to worry that much about it. It does have the priority with the Shadow Sneak, which makes it a little bit scary. This thing's kind of quick, and with priority, especially with two Swords Dances up, it uh, does a lot to pretty much everything I have, except for this little fella. So, I decided to go into the Galarian Zapdos for one reason. First of all, it can't do much with a Shadow Sneak here. And I do have the ability to outspeed it and hit it with an attack here, with at least going through disguise. And the only way I guarantee myself a kill is actually if I bust out the Terra Flying. So the lead Mimikyu, while it's not necessarily going to actually put me on the back foot enough to kind of have an early sweep, it does at least have to force me to use some assets that I wasn't really hoping to use. So I go for that Terra Flying, and then I can hit it with a Brave Bird, and that does take care of the Mimikyu, which is great. So luckily they did not go for that Shadow Sneak, which... I was hoping they went for something like a play rough, which turns out they did. And now with the balloons on my head, it feels like we started the party a little bit early. I always hate to be the first to Terra. Uh, it always just it kind of feels like in the late game, it's going to be a little bit more tough for me. But at this point, it's mostly fine. So they decide now to go into the Garchomp. And I'm just going to go ahead and get a little U-turn action on the guy. Get a little bit of chip, kind of scout out what this thing's working with here. Turns out it's actually Sand Veil. So no, uh, no freaking rough skin, which... Is good for me and now i have to figure out what wants to come in on a garchomp i kind of feel like this thing probably just wants to set up stealth rock or something um depending on what it's working with but it actually goes for that rock slide trying to land on the zapdos here and in comes freaking donald and i actually take that relatively nicely and now i'm thinking hell yeah donald it is your time to hit a dragon with an ice punch and have a fantastic time doing it but they actually are just going to end up switching that thing out and they're going to bring in glamora just because i guess they want this thing to be hit by yeah, freaking physical attack to get some toxic spikes up. I'm not super worried about it because obviously I do have the toxic croak uh, to come in and toxic soak them shits up. But I go for that ice punch and I actually <laughs> end up getting the freeze. So hey, if this young or freaking gumshoes has done anything useful in the past 15 times I've used it, that's at least the first time. I don't know. I got a freeze on the thing, which it does still get its uh, toxic debris up, which I'm fine with. And then I'm like, I could at least try to take advantage of this. I really wish I could earthquake, but I'm choice scarf there, of course. And then as I don't really want to switch in Toxic Rook on the thing, just because it could thaw out and then go for like an earth power, I decided it's in my best play to just go right back into the Galarian Zap, who doesn't take stealth rot or doesn't take the uh, toxic spikes. And then also I can just beat it up with the close combat, and they just let the popsicle Glamora go down. So we got pretty lucky there. <laughs> On the freeze, it could have the option to maybe go for like a power gem on the switch. 
But another layer of toxic debris does get set down, pop that bitch like a pinata before it dies. And uh, it gets two layers up. So I definitely need to go into Toxicroak yeah, soon, sooner than later. So as they decide to now go into Palafin, this is the perfect fella you, you already saw to switch Toxicroak in. Now, uh, it is not going to be superhero form quite yet. I know that I am going to be faster, of course, because of those webs. I can go for the U-turn just to get some meaningful chip here. And then I realize I'm like, you know, Toxicroak does come in here if it wants to go for... Uh, water stab or it probably wants to flip turn or something like that just to get itself to come back in later as a superhero mode so I am gonna bring in the croak and just hope that my dry ass can soak some stuff up here so first of all I soak up the poison spikes which is great and then we soak up the uh, the, the flip turn we're just out here soaking <laughs> and having a good time doing it so I know that uh, this is especially great for me to go for a sword dance just because this thing isn't even full form yet and as I go for that sword dance I'm like, hell yeah, it actually stays in. It's actually going to go for acrobatics. We're just being acrobatic by friggin' dolphins all damn day today, but we know we can take it easily. And this time, I can uh, know that I outspeed and fire off a close combat. So they actually just stay in. They realize it's probably not worth conserving the dolphin unless it could potentially come back in later and do some stuff. But yeah, with that sticky web up, the croak is faster than everything. And that's the key to making this thing useful is having not as shitty as a, of a speed tier. So... I take some life orb chip, but we took care of the dolphin, which is more important. And now as they go back into the Garchomp, this is the type of fella who could take a hit. Um, but obviously I am going to be able to outspeed it. And with a Swords Dance, close combat, base 120 with stab, just, it hits, it hits way too damn hard. Now, I go for that close combat, but they're actually going to end up busting out the Terra here. Most of all, I'm thinking, please, Lord, do not be a Terra Ghost for whatever reason. It turns out it's going to be Terra Water, probably thinking that I have the Ice Punch coverage. They saw the Ice Punch with the gum shoes. they're thinking, hey, Toxic Croak's probably a guy that I caught Ice Punch as well, as well, but I just actually just straight up close combat it, and that is going to take care of the Chomp. So I knew as soon as you get Toxic Croak in, with having them no ability to get rid of those sticky webs, I'm going to be able to stir some stuff up, because I'm just quick, and then with that Sword Stance paired with the Life Orb, we just do way too much damage yeah, to everything. Plus, the Sucker Punch is a good little... Uh, it's a good little insurance policy to ensure that we can at least get some good hits off, even if they have something faster. So, now they go into Meowskarada, who ordinarily would be able to just outspeed here and then pick me off. But, Sticky Web, he's all tangled up, or she's all tangled the hell up, and I can just outspeed. Close combat, it's not able to change its type quite yet, and uh, that's going to take care of the kitty. So, a well-played Toxicroak, or at least set up with a Swords Dance for free, and paired with Sticky Web, can in fact have a nice impact on a match here. So... Their final mon is in fact going to end up being a Tinkaton, who I'm thinking, you know, if it was built crazy, I guess could live a close combat, but it comes in, gets all tangled up, and then we can just go ahead and punch this thing in the face, and a close combat actually does finish it off, because Toxic Croak is the Toxic Goat, and, you know, as we do kill ourselves with a Life Orb, that is going to be the end of the match there, and I just had to toss this one in, because I had, I just had this match, and I was like, hey, let's go into the Toxic Croak video as well, because it's not often you get the Croak to really, really fully flex its you know sweeping skills so that is going to be the end of the game and the video thank you guys very much for watching and i'll catch you guys next time peace out